Ladies and gentlemen, Elite Heat is back. It's WrestleMania season, baby. It's WrestleMania week, Kevin. How excited are you? This show, this WrestleMania, shapes up to be pretty good, and we're going to get right into it. So I'm going to pass it to you. What's up, pal? Pal, I, I can't wait for WrestleMania, honestly. I can't remember the last time I said that. Aside from, like, the ones I went to live, but... Like, on TV, I, I I don't know. It's been a while. The last one that I was super hyped for is probably, like, 30, 31. So it's been almost a decade. And it's all thanks to Cody Rhodes, pal. That, that's the power of Cody Rhodes. And on top of that, you know, there's some intriguing storylines. Um, just like, like, wow, who would have thought when you get good wrestling and good storylines on the undercard, it would make an interesting show. Wow. Mind-blowing, isn't it? Instead of just like last year, hey, here's Brock versus Roman. This is the mainstream match, and then everyone else, you know, you guys do what you do. G give the give the women two minutes on TV. You know, we'll uh, we'll have poorly built up matches. We'll have Seth Rollins screaming about a mystery opponent for seven and a half weeks. <laughs> uh, pal, how are you feeling? Pal, I'm feeling really good. I think this is gonna be a fun show today. Obviously, we've got the cameras on, something yep. a bit different. Um, for the audio onlys, you're not gonna see this, but for I guess our YouTubes and everyone who's watching this, shout out where you actually see us. Um, if you like this format going forward, let us know. I think it's gonna be better, it's more fun to do this. You can see more expressions. I'm certainly expressive. Kevin loves being expressive when he's shouting about the Miz or whatever, whatever he wants to yell about. So yep. Yeah, it should be really good. Um, yeah. I'm excited for this. I think the big, well, there's a couple of big topics at hand, Kevin. There's a number of things. A lot of people want your thoughts on Rey Mysterio and Dominic. We'll get to that. Can't wait. A lot of people want to hear our final predictions on Cody and Roman and where we're at because we've done that every week. We've given updates. Yep. A lot of people want to hear that. And some people want to know about the John Moxley AEW situation. Hmm. Um, so do you want to start there hmm. just briefly? What? What are your thoughts on that, Kevin? John Moxley was on oral sessions with his wife and had some things to say about AEW, which were more than interesting, I'd say. Oh, for legal purposes, uh, I'll correct you to say that they changed the name to the sessions. Um, I guess you realize that oral sessions was a little too provocative for the podcast world. So now she goes, or now her podcast, Renee Paquette's podcast, is just referred to as the sessions. So. Yes. Her husband, John Moxley, appeared on the sessions the, this morning, the episode dropped, and he had some things to say about CM Punk's Instagram post, about working with Philip Jack Brooks, about the environment in AEW. Um, I, it's so much to unpack, but you know, we, we'll be quick here. Mm -hmm. Basically, John Moxley said that CM Punk uh, was difficult to work with. And he said that, you know, that the AEW backstage, like the drama is like unlike anything he's ever seen. He said he spent a couple years in the indies. He was in NXT, he was in WWE for years. And nothing compares from a drama perspective to the three and a half years he spent in AEW. So oh your thoughts, pal? Pal, it's just, uh, I don't know. Kevin, we've talked about this for literally years now. This stems from the top. <clears throat> I'm putting all the blame on this on Tony Khan for... Tony, this is the guy who is on Twitter lashing out at people's nine followers. When your boss is doing that, how's it supposed to be a super professional, high quality, well-run, great environment backstage when your boss is literally abusing, not abusing, but getting funny at Jack96342 on Twitter with no profile picture because he says Rampage sucks. You know, like, come on. So, yeah, when Moxley <laughs> comes out making these statements, I mean, a bunch of this makes sense. Like, his point of view on the whole CM Punk pitching the storyline thing. He talks about being in the room, pitching the idea. He explains that his side of that, but if that made sense, that was fine. Kevin, I want to touch on this. The part about him having the AEW World Championship and having no contract is nuts. Yeah, he said he was backstage at SummerSlam. And he could have just wrestled at SummerSlam if he wanted to. Which that is, is insane. Nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. Imagine, like, John Moxley just appears on WWE TV as John Moxley with the AEW title. I mean, it would have been big. Like, I, I think it would have been big, but it probably would have done more harm than good. Like, in the short term, yeah, everybody would have talked about it, but I think it would have been kind of Bush League from, from a, a WWE standpoint, don't you think? Yeah, correct. Correct, but it just, it's still, it's insane nonetheless. But just I mean, to think about is... it, yeah. Like, how does Tony Khan not, how do you not have your champion locked up? 
like, well, I, how do you not have a contract on that guy? Like, Kevin, this is the sort of stuff we, we talked about the AW honeymoon phase for like three years. Seemingly nothing could possibly be said wrong. There was not, there was, it was flowers and rainbows over an AW pal. This past year, a tick over a year, we've just, it's been kind of thing after thing. CM Punk's really kind of kicked off this train of momentum, it seemed like. And now it's just, yeah, Moxley's coming out, saying all this stuff. And who knows who's next? Who knows what will come out? So unless there's anything else you want to say about this, I think we can move on to WrestleMania, pal. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I'll ask you, what, what, like, what three matches are you looking forward to the most? Reigns and Cody. Yeah. I'm most looking forward to. Ray and Dominic. Yep. And Cena Theory. Okay. So that's, that's my three. Um, what about you? Uh, I, mean, I agree with the first. So I have the first two, rather, I should say. Roman Cody, Ray and Dominic. I'm actually most looking forward to Ray and Dominic, honestly. That, that storyline yep. has, has gripped me. Um, yep. And then I would say that the tag team titles. I, I think I saw somebody on, on Twitter or Instagram maybe propose that this is the biggest tag team title match ever, arguably. And, yep. I mean, it could be. You know, it could be. So uh, to have that kind of storyline invested in those kind of stakes in a tag team title match is unheard of in the Vince era. And, you know, like the tag team... Like tag team title matches in the Vince era were what like you had Braun Strowman and Nicholas versus um the Bar at yeah. WrestleMania 34. How exactly? Yeah, like Ziggler and Big E have a three minute match with whoever was champion back then. Like I I can't even remember. Was it was it the Usos? Were the Usos around that? Yeah, they probably were were around then. What in 2013? Yeah, it was like it was yeah Ziggler and I don't even remember Primo and Epico, like the, like that sort of quality yeah. of team. Yeah, you know, it was just Jack Swagger and Ziggler was a tag. Like, it's been nothing, Kevin. And so I, I love the point you make. It's the biggest tag title match ever, well, outside of TLC two. Sort of, they're very different. Um, just because like those matches were so big in hindsight now, but for this to be probably the WrestleMania either main event or part of the biggest storyline heading into WrestleMania. Involving the tag titles, it's massive. Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely, yeah. it's absolutely insane, pal. Uh, so seemingly they announced all of night two, or I'm sorry, not night two, the night one lineup, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, they've only announced Roman Reigns and Cody as night two, but since they've announced six matches for night one, I presume the rest of them will be on night two, but hasn't right. been confirmed yet. So what do you yeah. want to do? You want to run through night one in order? Um, yeah, I feel like we can run through night one. Um. Actually, that said, I want to ask one other question before we start, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Out of 10 right now, so mm-hmm. we're currently about three days out from WrestleMania, or yep. a few days out. Where's your excitement level at? Because you mentioned, yeah, last year, I know what you said applies to me as well. We could barely care less. There were a couple of bright things that last year that were a bit interesting, but on the whole, the interest was low heading into last year. Where are you at for this year, pal? What's your excitement out of 10? I'm like a seven. Like I said, I'm genuinely intrigued. Like, this is... I guess we should say this, too. This card is probably the best WrestleMania card since 31, I, I would say. Uh, I'm, try, like, I, I'm struggling to think of a better card, honestly, since 31. Like, it's been eight years since we've had a card that looks this good, top to bottom. I mean, we're just... We're flooded with good matches on the undercard. I mean, John Cena's opening the show. Mm. Like, like, that's how loaded this card is. You know, Edge is having a Hell in a Cell match. Like, Brock Lesnar is wrestling a giant. There's yeah. two women's titles matches. Two women's title matches. We got Trish yeah. Lita and Becky. Like, there's a lot going on on this show. And, yeah, but what do you think? Like, would you agree? I would. Now, I find this funny as well because I know it's Twitter, Kevin, but the, the people who are saying this is one of the worst or least interesting WrestleMania cards, I just... I don't know what to tell people like that. You're just going to hate anything regardless. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but I think to anyone who's objectively watching this or people who just enjoy wrestling period or WWE. Right. Yeah. I, it's probably the most compelling mania card since 30 to me. Yeah. Um, 31. I remember watching that build and that card, like the card on paper, you look at it now and it's like, Oh, that was a pretty good card at the time for me, at least I didn't feel that same interest. On WrestleMania 30, there was a heap of buzz going into it. You, you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? This show, WrestleMania 39, has a lot of that. The main event has genuine intrigue and there's genuine like big consequences riding on this main event. What, how they go about it, what they do, 
does the baby face win? Does the heel win? What direction? There's that and there's much more on the whole card. So yeah, to me, it's the, the most interesting WrestleMania card in nine years, which is pretty good. Pretty good for Triple H, pal. Yeah, but yeah, if you're looking from an intrigue standpoint or from a from a build standpoint, yeah, this one has been, you know, this, I mean, the build is not great. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that yeah. this has been like the best, most well-built WrestleMania ever. Yeah. Because it really hasn't been that great, but it's been better yeah. than what we've gotten like the past nine years, like you said. Um, but yeah, I think just card for card, if you're looking at just the match lineup, I think this is on par with 31. Um, you know, you and I had it as like a top 15 WrestleMania. So mm -hmm. I guess the question could be, could WrestleMania 39 on paper, could it be in contention? For like a top 15 show top 15 definitely i think that these two night shows are really hard to be like top five or yeah. top 10 all time right because you've got two nights like if it's one night it's like four hours you have three or four really good matches one like all-time great match some good undercard then it can be like a top five or ten show uh but with this with two nights this should be the best two night wrestlemania ever i agree yeah i mean there's Not so much, much depth Go ahead, go ahead. Not saying much to be fair, because 36 was in front of no one. The 37 you were at, and night two was questionable. And 38 was, I mean, good at points, not good at others. 39 looks pretty damn well-rounded. There's a lot of good stuff on this show that we're going to get. A lot of big stars, a lot of interesting, compelling stuff. So, And it's a big main event as well. So, yeah, interesting card, compelling card. I'm really looking forward to it. I'd give my excitement level a now for the show. Probably around a seven and a half. Maybe come the night, it'll be like an, a nine. But right now, about seven and a half, which is pretty good. Last year, I was about a three. So yep. there you go. I would say I would agree. I'm about, I'm about a seven right now, like I said. And I was like a three, four last year. Yeah, but there's so much depth on this card. So I think the the night two fatigue won't quite exist based on what I'm seeing here on Wikipedia, pal. Um, I don't know if mm -hmm. night one, I don't know if this has even been confirmed. I, I have no idea. I'm just going based on Wikipedia. What they have is night one. So. Yeah. Yeah, this should be interesting. All right, let's get to it, pal. So, yep. night one, as we know, has already been announced by WWE. Austin Theory is going to kick off the show by defending the U.S. title versus John Cena. I mean, this is like this is crazy. Like, I, I'm I, I'm not really a, a fan of the build. Uh, Austin yep. Theory really hasn't held his own. Like, Cena just came at him, like what three weeks ago in Boston. It was like, yeah, they pipe in crowd noise for you, bro. Like, nobody cares about yeah. you, bro. And what has yeah. Austin Theory's response been? Oh, I'm going to be the first Austin Theory. Like, just really nothing witty. It's kind of been just, like, like create a wrestler promos, like WWE 2K23 My Rise promos. Nothing really out of this world from Austin Theory. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's just, that's just more of a limitation on him. I, I don't think he's that clever and that witty on the mic. And he may have met his match here with John Cena. But the prediction is... Austin Theory is going to win. I think it's like a 90, 98% chance that Austin Theory wins. Just because Cena will never be around. So he's he's appeared, what, one time on TV, right? In the, in the road to WrestleMania? I, I'm not forgetting yeah, anything. Yeah, he appeared on Raw. And then he was on SmackDown like three months ago in the tag match. And then before that, he was on TV like three years ago. There you so. go. So yeah, so who do you think is going to win this one, pal? And, and what are your thoughts on it? I really want Cena to win this match. And not just because he's like the baby face. I, I genuinely think Cena winning is just more beneficial. Because like, okay, we look at this match, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Theory's probably going to win. Let's be real here. <coughs> yeah. But is that really going to be that beneficial to him? Like, okay, Theory wins a 15-minute match against Cena. Cool. It, it, it would be a lot like, to me, the Roman Reigns, like WrestleMania main events from like seven, eight years ago. Like, okay, he beat this all-time great big star. And... Yeah, it's kind of like when Roman faced Orton at SummerSlam in 2014. It's kind of like that. Mm. Except the only thing, just with the build, as you mentioned, that Cena promo was that scathing and that just like ripped Theory to shreds. Mm -hmm. And all Theory's response has been is an empty arena promo saying, I'm Austin Theory, A-Town down. I'm going to be the first me at WrestleMania. And it's like, okay. Yeah, cool. Exactly. Kevin, what, I, what I think, what I pitch for this is WWE have John Cena beat Austin Theory mm -hmm. and then the very next night do an open challenge because everyone loves that. Everyone wants to call back to that. He has an open challenge and you have, I don't know, Bron Breaker. Maybe Theory comes out and answers it again or someone else, someone new, someone fresh, maybe debuting a surprise from another company. I don't know. Someone answers the open challenge. 
beats Cena. It's like an OMG night after Mania moment. And then Theory can actually have to work and fight to win the title back and people can care about it more. Because you have Theory win this match, Kevin. Okay. He beats Cena. Uh, great. And yeah. why exactly. do he care about you, Theory? Like, the, like the, I think the whole point of this match is as well, Cena's had how many WrestleMania, I guess, memorable moment matches in the last like 10 years. He's wrestled undercard or mid-card matches for a decade. And this is your biggest star of the 21st century. You know, so I think him having a, a WrestleMania moment at the start of WrestleMania in Hollywood, it would be cool. Why not? Start WrestleMania off with Cena winning the US title, jumping in the crowd. Why not? That'd be awesome. It would but, be. No, that, so they'll probably have Theory win and then the crowd will be lukewarm and then they'll just move on to the next match. You know, like, yeah, is what it is. What are your thoughts, pal? Yeah, I, I, I don't really have much else to add on what you're saying. Like, it's just, to me, this match is just there. I don't want to say it's a waste of John Cena, but mm. I, I think they could be doing better things with Cena, honestly. I, I'm not sure what that better thing would be, but just oh. like, I just think they, like, Cena yeah. and Edge, you know? But yeah. for the limitations, for what it is, the limitations and availability that Cena has, I think this would be fine. Cena's putting over young talent on the way out. Whether Austin Theory lives up to it is up to Austin Theory. Yeah, so my, my final prediction is also Theory wins. I think it's going to be a clean yeah. clean win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so next up on night one, it, they have Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. I mean, this match has potential to steal the show. But uh, let's be honest, this could be the best match yeah. of both nights from an in-ring okay. standpoint. And, and it's kind of crazy to say that about Logan Paul. Like, we've gotten to the point in just, like, it's been not even two years since his first match. And we're already, like, at the point where we're like, okay, yeah, we're penciling in Logan Paul as a potential show stealer. I don't know if that says more about Logan Paul and more about Seth Rollins, how good he is, or just a combination of both. But this feels like, from an athletic standpoint, like the perfect matchup for Rollins. And Logan Paul is like, he can go in the ring with him, and I think these two guys are going to do some pretty cool stuff. But what, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think this is going to be excellent. This will probably be the match people look back on as the most rewatchable match of the show. Yeah. I feel like looking at this card, I think this will be about 20 to 22 minutes in that ballpark. And it's just going to be phenomenal. Seth Rollins is, he's basically our generation's version of what Shawn Michaels was. You can put him in any match at WrestleMania. It'll be really good. Now I know Rollins hasn't had the classics to the, the level Shawn did, but for what we get nowadays, Seth Rollins is the top tier for the in ring at WrestleMania particularly. So this is going to be excellent. I can't wait to see what they do in this match, just exactly what they pull off. Because as we know, as we've seen, Logan Paul is really good. He's really good. I can't stand him because he's a heel. That's his job. Yeah. So I think it's going to be great watching Seth Rollins, you know, laughing in his face at certain points of the match, yelling at him. Logan Paul will be on top in the match doing his moves. And he's probably going to jump through an announce table again or do some like 750. Foot. Who knows? It's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining. You won't be able to look away. That's what I'm excited about for this match. You, you can't miss this. You're going to miss something if you take five minutes out to watch this, you know, when you're watching this. So, yeah, can't wait for this match. It should be really good. Yeah, who do you think wins? Oh, that's actually a hard one, you know. Um, I, I think they give it to Logan Paul. I don't think Seth, R Seth Rollins doesn't need any anything. They give Logan Paul a big, like, superstar moment. Gets a big singles yeah. match win. Yeah. For the hell of it. I think... I agree. Uh, yeah. I think WWE are going to go down the path with this WrestleMania. And this will be a theme through the rest of, well, I guess, my predictions as well. I don't know about you. But putting over the the next guys, the new era yeah. sort of thing. If we're talking about Austin Theory beating Cena, Logan Paul beating Rollins, and we'll have more predictions to come. It, it makes sense. It does. In Cena's case, he's hardly on. But Seth Rollins, if he loses, no one cares. It's Seth Rollins. You know, he, he'll be there yeah. week to week doing his thing so exactly yeah then we have trish stratus lita and becky lynch versus damage control so i've seen people saying that that a after the six man the six woman tag the next night somehow they could do some angle where becky lynch and lita wind up defending their tag titles to ronda rousey and Shayna baszler I I have you have you heard this i don't know if it's true i don't know if uh, does anybody want to see that hmm. like i, I heard I, somebody I, talk I about it on a that. podcast or something I, I think it was a podcast where I heard it. I don't remember which one. Yeah. Or a YouTube video or something. I, I don't want to see that, personally. I'm not... Uh, I'm like Charles Barkley, bro. I, I don't want to see that. 
I don't. Yeah. Now this just anyway, this six woman tag. Yeah. I don't think we need to make like the biggest deal about it. I mean, it should be fine. Like you know, it, it won't be bad. Is that I'm not I'm not gonna act like oh my god I can't make guys. I'm so excited. Like not really. You know, yeah. it'll be it'll be fine. You know, I, I have a question for you though. Involved in the match. I have a question. Good talent involved. Sorry. I have a question for you. What what, what yeah. are your your honest thoughts on Trish Stratus' work rate from this past Monday Night's Raw? Oh, fantastic. How old is Trish again? He's like 47, 48, something oh like that. Oh my god. Yeah. Ridiculous. Insane. Yeah, yeah her work rate is stellar. Thoughts, um, but yeah, yeah, her work rate is stellar. She can go yep. in the ring. She's like 03 Kurt Angle in the ring, pal. But yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Like, this match is just, it's in the middle of the card. It's cool yeah. to see some legends out there. Um, I, yeah. I think I think Damage Control is going to win. I think they're going to go with, with the newer talent. I don't know why I feel that, but yeah. yeah. It'll probably be similar to what AEW did at Revolution, but they just all the all the younger talent just win all the matches. I mean, yeah. probably right. Like in this case, yeah, have EO Sky or Bailey or Dakota pin Becky or I don't know pin Lita. Who knows? Why not? Who yeah. cares? You know. Yeah, then you have young talent, another young talent, Omos going up against Brock Lesnar. So so far, this is what Wikipedia has is night one. Mm-hmm. So is any of this stuff announced? Did they did they confirm this? Night well, I confirm theory and scene is opening That's the it. whole show. Right. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know about the rest of it. But regardless, I want to talk about Brock and Almas. Yep. I, I think that this is actually like I at the start, I was a bit, you know, eh. yeah. Now I'm, um, I'm not looking to act as if I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait. I'm counting down hours, minutes. I'm got my big Almas po- poster on the wall. I'm not like that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm interested. You know, yeah, you got a fat head of Almas behind you. You should do Hell, that, Kyle. Get a nice I've big got, fat I'm head. I'm an almost sapien. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, and, and I will say this. To anybody doubting whether or not Brock Lesnar wanted this match, look at the way he sold for Omos on the go-home edition of Raw. Like, when have you ever seen Brock Lesnar run away in fear from someone? Uh, never. I'll answer that question. It's never happened. And, and, I, and I love, too, like, it's such a scary thought. Like, like Omos, like, chases him out of the ring. And then Brock is, like, outside, just outside the ring, smiling, like, yeah. I met my match, yeah. Oh yeah. Which is crazy. It's a big it's a big plus for Omos. I think he has everything to gain here. Brock has absolutely nothing to lose. Brock is like a, a Mount Rushmore guy. Omos has everything to gain, and Brock is being very generous. Because you know, like when Brock doesn't want to work with someone, just look at like that WrestleMania, what was it, 32 match with Dean 34, Ambrose? Or 32 against Ambrose, 34 yeah. against Reigns, we've seen it. Yeah. He throws belts at Vince, he he, he <laughs> He's difficult. We saw him at 35. He's working against Seth Rollins. And he said, stuff this. Put me on first. Let me get out the hell out of here. Like, Brock, when he doesn't want to be there, is great. This, Brock clearly really wants to wrestle this guy. Yeah. Which I love that that rubbishes the narrative that Vince McMahon's holding Brock against his will, forcing him to work against Omos. Like, stop it. it, it it's going to be interesting seeing, like, Omos, a seven foot three, just monster against Brock. He makes Brock look tiny, which is unbelievable. I never thought I'd say that. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I don't know how long this match goes for. Maybe like five to seven yeah, minutes. I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, Omos wins, okay. too. I think Omos wins. And Kevin, quick question for you. Do you think them doing this is more beneficial than them doing Brock versus Lashley for? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. We've seen, we've seen Brock and Lashley three times. We know what that match is. It's five, six minutes finish a spam we've been there done that this is different this is new so yeah a lot of pressure go. for omos pal are you agreeing that omos is gonna win i mean it makes sense yeah yeah, yeah another young guy going over makes sense there you go all right pal so i know this is one that you really want to get into um so this is the most personal storyline very personal there john this is the second father-son match in the history of WWE. First one came, what, 22 years prior? WrestleMania 17 between Vincent Kennedy McMahon and his son, Shane McMahon. Um, yeah. A much different storyline. But, yeah, I'll let you, you go first, and then I'll, I'll go after you. And just to clarify, I just want to make 100% certain we're talking about uh, your... your... Favorite wrestler Rey Mysterio and uh, Dom. Yes, that is correct. The only father son match that we that we have on this card is Rey versus Dominic. Um, go ahead. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I was gonna say now. 
obviously everyone wants to hear your thoughts. I'll get my bit out of the way, then we'll pass to you here. This has been built up really oh, yeah. well. Yep. The stuff Dominic's been saying, I know for you especially, but even just me watching this, this is great stuff. How he's saying he wishes Eddie was his real dad, how Ray is a bad father, how, you know, he's like yelling at his own mother and sister, Aaliyah, and all this sort of stuff. It, it's, just, it's great TV for starters. And I love the fact that they had like a month of Dominic trying to get Ray to beat his own son on TV. That was hilarious. <laughs> then they finally did it. And then I, I was just like spam tweeting, OMG, Ray beat his child on telly. Like, it's just, that's phenomenal. First, I, I was want to say that. I think Dominic, when he came in, he had that first match with Seth Rollins like what, two and a half years ago at SummerSlam, which Seth Rollins is Seth Rollins. He can make anyone look good. From there, for a while, Dominic was sort of like, eh, Charisma's, yeah, promos aren't great. His in-ring's okay. Put him, send him to NXT, blah, blah, blah. The last, like, year working with Judgment Day, now this storyline, th- this has absolutely saved his career and made him compelling as all hell. He's now wrestling Rey Mysterio in a match that many have dreamed of for years. Yeah. At WrestleMania, this is a match, this, along with Cena Theory, and, you know, it was like Brock and Lashley for a while. These are matches which, for years, people were like, oh, it'd be cool if this happened. And now it's happening. So for us to be getting this with the storyline they've got going, it's an actually really good storyline. They've done this really well. I couldn't tell you how they could have done this better. Like, I think for the most part, it's been perfectly done. So, Kevin, I'll pass to you. My oh, yeah. excitement level's high for this. What are your thoughts? Oh, I can't wait. It? Can't wait for this match, pal. I, I will say, the, uh, like, the way they've Americanized this is... Um, it, it's just, I, I'll say from a realism standpoint, if this was, like, a real thing... Like in a Latino household, I'll say this from experience. Um, if I if I told my mother to shut up the way Dominic Mysterio told his mother to shut up, you, even at my age, you would never see me again. Like that, you know, I'd be in a ditch somewhere. Um, so I, I I love that. It's like a soap opera, you know. It's like we're watching a soap opera play out. It's like you got Aaliyah Mysterio there, you got Ray's um, Ray's wife, Dominic, Rhea Ripley's involved to an extent. Um, this it's just it's paying homage to the storyline that Ray and Eddie had back in the day, and we, and we come a long way. Like who would have thought that little kid that was in the ring getting tormented by Eddie Guerrero would go on to grow up and now get beat by his father on live TV? Like it's just it's crazy. Um, and this has been a really slow burn build because we saw what Ray um Dominic and Rhea ruined Thanksgiving at the Masiro household. They ruined Christmas. They ruined Ray's Valentine's Day. I assume Dominic's going to ruin Ray's induction speech at the Hall of Fame. I, I, I think that's a safe bet. Um, everything about this is phenomenal. Like, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. It's really, like, nostalgic for me. You know, it's something that really, like, it hits home. And it, it's a really well-done storyline. I, I think this is the most compelling storyline. Like I said, the most compelling storyline of both nights. Um, most well-built. I'm not sure what the match is going to be. I don't think it really matters how good the match is in the ring. Like, I, I think people just want to see Rey Mysterio get his hands on Dominic. And Dominic has become... Is he the best heel in the company right now? Is, is, that, is that a stretch? I, I think he is. Well, too, too many people like Roman, so yeah. I'd say yeah, so. The best, like, legitimate yeah. heel. Like, yeah. you, like, you think legit heel, not like Charlotte Flair, who's being forced down your throat as a baby face, but everybody's sick of her. I'm, Charlotte's a terrible example. I don't know what Charlotte is, but yeah, carry on. Yeah, <laughs> carry exactly. On. But I mean, yeah. it's, you know, some people will consider Charlotte a heel, but Dominic's yeah, like yeah, a true yeah. heel. Like he's out there, yeah. he's cutting this promo. He's getting like a few chance. He's getting booed out of the building. Yeah. Um, this past Monday, it just he that was the best promo of his entire career. Right. Like he he was he was speaking in Spanish. So essentially, what he said in Spanish for those of you who who don't who don't understand is that um his fa- he's pretty much said that his mom and his sister are jealous of him because he's taller and more handsome than his father. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, and he that's said that great. his father is just... He basically called his father a coward, essentially. He said that his father always sided with Aaliyah, that he, they all, him, his parents always picked Aaliyah over him. Uh, yeah, it was great. This is great. This yeah. is great stuff. This is, this is such a well-done storyline. Yeah. Like, you look at this in totality... This will have videos made on it by like wrestling's premiere and YouTube's like that in years down the line. Like how well this has been told, and 
I think come the night, I think it's going to be a super fun, entertaining 15-minute match with these two. It, because, I mean, it's father and son. These two grew up doing 619s on each other in the backyard sort of thing. So it, it, it's going to be fun. I feel like they've workshopped this match for like 20 years. And we're going to see it come WrestleMania night. This will be the most entertaining match of Dominic's career. The Rollins match was different in its entirety. This is just going to be so fun. So, yeah. Any other thoughts, pal? Yeah, I just want to say this too. What makes this work so well is Dominic playing like the delusional, like spoiled rich kid character. It's so good. Like he's he literally had the world handed to him. Grew up with a silver spoon, got every opportunity, like grew up in a big house with a famous father. And he's just out there, like, saying he had this hard life. This difficult life. Like, it's such a relatable storyline. Anybody can look at this and just be like, yeah, I want to see that kid get... Like, he needs to get put in his place by his parents. It's so relatable. So well done. Yeah. That's all I got, pal. Well, I also want to say, <clears throat> like, with that, from, from a storyline standpoint, we, we talked about Cena and Theory a moment ago. A lot of people compared Theory and Dominic Mysterio for a while. Like, guys who are, you know, maybe not ready... Yeah, many would say, but they're like being pushed by WWE. The, the theory Cena storyline has done theory no favors yet. No, Cena literally just said, "You're literal trash. You don't deserve to work with me." And theory's like a town down. <laughs> but this, I can, we can clearly describe Dominic Mysterio's character, why we don't like him, why he's a great heel, and Dominic can use this to slingshot into a successful main roster career now. Yeah. This in every way has made Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. This has been incredible. And hopefully come the night, they execute on a great match, a really enjoyable, entertaining, story-filled match. Dom probably gets the win, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, Dom gets then, the win. And then you can move on from there. Maybe Dom starts trying to go for a mid-card title. Maybe he go goes up. Who knows? But it, it, Dominic Mysterio is so much more interesting because of this. And yeah, hats off to everyone involved. It's been so well done. Yeah, it's, it's so fun to watch. It's really... I mean, to be fair to also Theory for a moment, Dominic Mysterio does have, like, his father, his mother, his sister. Like, he's got a, a lot of resources, you know? Uh, also, Theory has an A-list Hollywood star who showed up one time, you know? So... Uh, it, I town down, pal. Theory doesn't have a lot to work with compared to Dominic, but, yeah, this is a star-making performance, nevertheless, for Dominic. Yeah. Dominic should be in the main event scene after this. Uh, he's, yeah. he's been that good. Um, but, yeah, so... Let's talk about the, the WrestleMania showcase matches just for a moment. Oh, uh, great. Okay. Like, I, w what is this, first of all? Like, that, that's my main question. Is that literally calling it showcase matches? Like, what, what is that? What I worry about with both of these shows, I'm assuming these are on the main card as well. I'm assuming these aren't the kickoff matches. Yeah, um, I think so. I, just, I don't think there's been any pre-show matches announced. But I don't know, yeah. Because if these are on the main card, I'm really worried that these will kill the momentum of either yeah. show. Like, let's say you've got night one. Theory and Cena's really entertaining. They do some emotional thing with Cena teasing retirement. They have Brock and Omos. Or they're doing matches. You think, oh, my God, it's really fun. Seth Rollins, Logan Paul. And then randomly, it's the, the men's WrestleMania showcase. And you've got the Viking Raiders out there punching the Alpha Academy for no reason. And it would just derail the whole show. Now, I know Phil is needed on every show. Well, no, it's not. This is WrestleMania. This doesn't need to be here. There's no reason for this. I get it. In the men's one, you're going to have the Street Profits. Montez Ford will get a WrestleMania win. I get it. Cool. Nice for him. Awesome. But really, you couldn't have even done... Even if you do like the Street Profits against, I don't know, the Alpha Academy and make some fun storyline out of it. At least that's a story. This is just a match for the sake of the match. And that, that that sucks. We don't we don't care. Yeah, well, I don't care. Basically. Yeah, it's kind of. I'll speak for you, pal. I don't care. Yeah, it kind of blows the card. I, I think the matches will be fun, but yeah, like you said, it could be it could halt momentum. I don't know. They'll probably be used as buffer matches in the middle of the card, you yeah. know, in between title matches or whatever to calm people down after Austin Theory beats Cena, whatever the case may be. But yeah, I don't I don't know. It's really odd. That's an odd choice of marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got no Cinnamon Toast Crunch match, pal. What happened with that? Before I address that, can I just say, with these, like, WrestleMania showcase matches, why not have them, if you're going to have these matches, just call them, like, you know, tag team title, number one contenders match, or maybe make it a ladder match, or do something. Just, if you're going to do this, just have it be, the, yeah, for the men, at least, 
tag team title number one contenders ladder match. The winner gets a tag title match anytime. Then you have Montez Ford like on a, a 50 foot ladder doing a frog splash or something, and you can make it more fun. I don't know. Anyway, you mentioned Cinnamon Toast. What, 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 was you, what were you saying there? I'm just saying there's no Cinnamon Toast Crunch match. I was looking forward to that, to that specialty match, pal. Yes! No Cinnamon Toast Crunch match, pal. There you go. Well, what do you think about the rumors that Randy Orton's going to face Bobby Lashley at this show? Ooh. I don't mind that, actually. I think if they have Lashley win the Battle Royal, I think that's on SmackDown. The, yeah. the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Then you can have Lashley come out and just even do like a, a five-minute little bit in the ring where he's got like a trophy... And he's like, you know, he's all jacked. He's yelling about how, like, this should have been my year, WrestleMania, my moment, blah, blah, blah. Then you can have, I hear voices in my head. And then Auden can come out and St. Louis and the world all over will <laughs> erupt, pal. Randy Orton will walk down the 80-foot <laughs> red carpet to the WrestleMania stage. He'll get in the ring like that. Oh, and yeah. he'll stand there. That's good. And be like, Lashley. Okay, oh, out of nowhere. And then they'll have Randy Orton just like posing, which is That's a much good. better idea than him, Kevin, ruining Cody Rhodes' WrestleMania moment oh, please. and saving the stable who put please. him on the shelf for nine months. Brilliant idea. You know who on Twitter. Please. Anyway, yeah, no, I think some, do something like that. Have Lashley yeah. win the Battle Royal, have a segment. He's like, I should be on this card. Everyone knows I should be on this card. I'm better than most of the people backstage, blah, blah, blah. Orton comes out, pal. Big pop. Big pop, pal. All right, yep. pal. Uh, let's talk about the Raw Women's title match. Bianca Belair what versus Asuka. What's, what's the build, then? Well, yeah, I was going to ask you, what is the build? I, I Like, what, nobody's ready for Asuka? And Bianca Belair is the EST? I, I'm disappointed, pal, in the women's championship matches. There's been no build for either one, which is odd, considering that... Mm. Like, they, WWE has a ton invested in these two ladies. Um, and, you know, the, the whole women empowerment and the revolution propaganda that we've seen over the past decade. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of odd just if we're getting these two matches that's like, here, women's title matches, here you go, care. I don't know. But um, I heard this, maybe this is why. I also, I, I read this rumor that um, originally it was supposed to be if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be Bianca Belair versus Ronda Rousey. Oh no, no, Bianca Belair versus Charlotte and Ronda Rousey versus Rhea Ripley, I believe. That was the original right. plans. Okay. Um, and I guess Ronda Rousey nixed that. She was like, no, nah, I don't want to work with that Aussie pal. I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know what happened with that, but... That's right. Yeah. I, yeah. I think... Uh, I'll just say this real quick and then... Yeah. Um, I think just Asuka is an underwhelming challenger at this stage in the game. Like, yeah, the match would be good in ring... But Asuka hasn't really done anything since she came up to the main roster a number of years ago. So it's hard for me to get invested. No, I, I fully agree. Um, and one thing I want to say with this, Bianca Belair's big-time matches she's had in her career. So she's had the Royal Rumble win. She's had success at that show because of winning the Rumble. Her WrestleMania is, I want to look at this because now she's been really as like the main star. So 37 was the Sasha Banks match. 38 with Becky Lynch, now 39 against Asuka. Well, at this rate, it looks like Mania 40 is going to be maybe either Charlotte or Ronda Rousey or um, someone like that or Rhea Ripley. Who knows what they do? So they're doing things like big matches every year for Bianca Belair, and fair enough so. Big time, fe- the female scene in many ways. Um, but I look at Kevin, the builds. Mm-hmm. This is, it's not a great. Kevin, I remember two years ago with the, the Sasha Banks match. Oh, yeah. I was, I don't know, I was, you were, a lot of people were just going, what is this? The whole storyline was, can the baby faces team up together uh, and get along? We had like Bianca Belair and Sasha versus the Iconics, whichever random women's team on SmackDown. And you're watching it going, can they do, can they not do anything better for Belair? And now we're seeing this again. We had Belair and Asuka team up like two straight weeks and that was really the the crux of this storyline yeah and for like two other weeks bianca belair would beat like chelsea green on an episode of raw and then oscar just comes out and laughs and leaves yeah. and it's like okay you know like this is this is supposed to be your big time like yeah. female baby face like you don't do anything better can you get creative please like bianca belair the match will be great the entrance will be amazing big spectacle we know that but give her give her more 
it, you're investing so much into her. Do better, please. Like, yeah, they're limping. They're just limping to the finish line with this build. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. They're slated to headline night two. Uh, it looks like so. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? As in thoughts on Rhea Ripley and Charlotte? Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. Even as a diehard Rhea Ripley fan myself, just get the title on her and move on, please. Uh, okay, I'm watching this. I don't know. Like, this Rhea Ripley-Charlotte build's gotten a little better at the start. It was just, come on. It was just painful. They had a brawl. They had a, a good little promo back and forth. They tried something. It's, it's really hard to care about Charlotte Flair at this stage in the game, for me at least. I watch her. She's standing in the ring. 14 time women's champion guys charlotte flair and i'm just i don't know re ripley's cool it's cool seeing her gonna have her moment that's awesome but just yeah. uh, baby face heel tweener charlotte flair I, i'm not invested so yeah yeah exactly go. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just uh, might as well group these matches together uh, yeah you know i think i think bianca keeps her title um, yep. I think Rhea Ripley wins her, the SmackDown title. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, them main eventing night one. Uh, I guess it makes sense to have, like, the Royal Rumble winner, the Women's Royal Rumble winner main event. But at the same time, not like... Main I'm not main event. Sure. Yeah, at the same time, like, I'm not sure who's asking for this, but based on the card that's being presented here, uh, it appears that... This is the only match worthy of main eventing, unless you're gonna main event Bianca Belair and Asuka. But right now they don't have the tag team title match slated for night one, as of what I'm looking at here. So, I, yeah, who, know, who even? Know? I don't know. I I don't think any of those night one matches are standout main event options. It's it's all a bunch of matches that could main event, but no no match we think that's the main event. Yeah, the the best built women's match is that six woman tag with the legends and Damage Control and Becky. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna be a. I, I think it, I wouldn't say a flat way to end night one, but Rhea yeah. Ripley winning won't be like this magical moment. It won't be like Batista winning the belt at WrestleMania twenty one. Maybe it will. Who knows? Maybe there'll mm. there'll be a large fanfare that I'm not anticipating. Nevertheless, yeah. um, okay, real quick, just on the on these like night one main events, I just want to make a point. Mm -hmm. We look at the night one main events we've had so far. The first one, the thirty six, was the Boneyard match, which everyone loved. It was amazing. Yep. Thirty seven, there was that big debate: should it be Bobby versus Drew for the WWE title or Sasha Belair? There was like a debate: who's going to main event? They're both good options. Thirty eight, it was Stone Cold Steve Austin having a match. Can this year live up to that? I hope so. I hope they do something which we look back on and go, "Yeah, that was an awesome, fun night one main event." But if it's Rhea just beating Charlotte Flair, it won't be. So yeah, there you go. All right, so Edge is going to face the Demon Finn Balor, as Finn Balor confirmed this past Raw, um, in a Hell in a Cell match. Now, my question for you is, why why is this feud so deserving of a Hell in a Cell match? I, I really don't understand. Like, I know that, that the Judgment Day turn on Edge kicked him out of his own group, but I don't understand why this is deserving of a Hell in a Cell match. Like, I we haven't seen, like, any knockdown, drag-out wars or matches these two have had before this that uh, wait did they wrestle one-on-one -on -one before this i don't remember they wrestled a couple of times that's 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 kind of why this has been going for a long time oh yeah this they did line. that's right they i forgot i forgot they wrestled each other right this, this has been going because i mean at the rumble they did the um the tag match yeah the tag match and before that we've seen edge and bala chat can confirm people listening can clarify this I'm, I don't watch Raw as much as a lot of people do. Um, but it, yeah, they've wrestled a couple times now. This is the big blow-off to end the feud. I personally thought the feud ended at the Royal Rumble in that tag match. I watched that match and thought that's a feud ender. You've got Bianca, not Bianca, you've got Beth Phoenix and Edge standing tall, having beaten Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. Um, and I, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot, I I, I forgot we got the, um, the I Quit match at Extreme Rules. In October, where Finn Balor was like gonna hit Beth Phoenix with a concerto, I forgot about that. Oh my god, that was that was like seven months ago, dude. Yeah, yeah. No. I don't know, like I'm, I, I don't know it. I'm not trying to be super negative, but I'm not into it. I'm not into this. I'm really not. Like I get it as Edge, and you yeah. know we're getting the Demon is returning, but I don't care. It's not 2015 anymore. I don't really care about the Demon. 
yeah i'm i don't know about you i'm into it because it's like edge is involved so i'll care because it's edge yeah. edge deserves me caring because he's awesome and he's proven to be great over a long period of time one of the, the all-time great wrestlers finn Balor dressed in carnage paint I, I, I'm not. I'm not that interested. I don't care whether the paint's purple or red this time. I'm not. I don't care. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, the the hell in the cell is back to like the gray, like silver steel. It's That's not great. Really red anymore. That's lovely. It's good. Lovely. Um, match would be really. This is the thing. You look at the match and you do star ratings. It'll probably be like a four, four and a quarter, maybe four and a half star. Like great match. But it's there's not it, this feud's gone on about two months too long now this this end of the royal rumble in my opinion watching that yeah. match it's still going here both guys are ready to move on to different things i think edge is just about ready to almost call a day, a day on his career there's no need to just wrestle for two three more years if it's just going to be year-long feuds like this mm-hmm. you might as well just have a, a an awesome retirement match right off in the sunset he's had an amazing comeback run and yeah there you go yeah i'm not a. Uh... I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I absolutely agree with you on on one's point. Edge does deserve like fanfare and us to care, but at the end of the day, I don't know. It, it could it could Edge be doing better stuff? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, we move <clears> on. <throat> yeah. Well, yeah. Do you think who do you think's gonna win? Uh, you've got to have Edge win, don't you? Like it's yeah. not you can't say Fogel's a young guy. He's like forty two. Yeah. So, you know, Edge wins at WrestleMania. His like final WrestleMania moment. Um, because I, I forget thirty eight. He wrestled Styles, correct? Yes. Did, did he, he win or lose that match? Uh, let me see. I'll tell you right now. I don't know, obviously, thirty seven. He got stacked and pinned. Yep. And at thirty six, he was having a match against Randy Orton in front of no one. Yep. So, let me tell you right now. Hold on. Yep. Let's yeah, the, see. The main point I'm so, making here, Edge hasn't really had that. Yeah, I can he recall. he beat AJ. Yeah, he beat him. Okay. Yeah, but it wasn't that memorable. Like a signature, like big WrestleMania win or moment yet, to be yeah. honest. Like he, he beat Randy Orton in front of no one. Yes, he beat Styles. That wasn't like a, oh my god. He he ended that feud. He owned him. Like this should be the big win for Edge at WrestleMania. A big kind of awesome picture perfect moment. That's how I do it at least. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The the only thing I want to say too is that when I think of Hell in a Cell matches, I just I think of like. You know, Triple H and Cactus Jack, they have this, like, massive storyline, you know, on the heels of, like, a great Royal Rumble match. And it's like, okay, this is the final battle. Hell in a Cell, this is ending the feud. There's been a lot of bloodshed already. Mm-hmm. And we're just not seeing that with Edge and Finn Balor. But nonetheless, I do agree with you. It's going to be, like, a four, four and a half star match. It's going to be good. Just from a storyline point, point of view, it's hard to get invested. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, what are you thinking about Gunther, Sheamus, and McIntyre? Potential show stealer, you think? Uh, I think from a like a star rating point of view, the best match of WrestleMania. Um, just from it's gonna be you, you once again, we talk about this with Logan Paul and Seth Rollins. You will not be able to look away in this match. The guys involved, the style this is gonna be, this is gonna be you can be watching it like feeling pain yourself, yeah, and how hard they're either chopping each other Oof. or kicking each other's heads in or like, all this sort of thing. It's gonna be nuts. Um, I think it's the perfect WrestleMania match for the guys involved because Drew McIntyre, he's been in an awkward position really since he didn't have his moment a few years ago. He's kind of floundered and bounced around between the main event and the upper mid card. And what do we do with him? Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, Reigns again, but he's not actually ready for a moment yet. And we're not going to end Reigns' run. So McIntyre losing his hometown. Now Gunther, Sheamus, it's, it's been a bit kind of all over the place for Drew. This is the perfect spot for him. Same as Sheamus and same with Gunther. Um, this is going to bring the best out of all the guys involved. Um, it's the most interesting Intercontinental Championship match since, I'd say, WrestleMania 10 in the ladder match. Um, because I, I don't think there's really been an Intercontinental title match that is really like of this. Like This is going to be incredible. This is going to be a 20-minute, damn near five-star match. So uh, you got me thinking now, thinking. Yeah. So everyone's thinking hmm. Intercontinental Championship matches at WrestleMania. There hasn't been one in like a bunch of years now. They've, they've forgotten about that belt. And before then, it either wasn't on the show or the match was like JBL versus whoever. I think Rey Mysterio. They did WrestleMania 25 match over the IC title. Um, 
you know, before then it was rather not featured. So, yeah. There's been 21 Intercontinental title matches at WrestleMania. Wow. That's fascinating. Okay. That's pretty bad considering it's hot. every second year it's not in it, basically. Like, yeah, wow. That's interesting. I mean, the one that one that stands out to me is that Fatal Four Way they did a while back. I think it was thirty four, with like Rollins and whoever else was in there. Miz, Rollins, yeah, Rollins, Balor, and Miz at thirty three. Yeah, that was triple oh, thirty four. Sorry, thirty four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think of that one it was good, but that was good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, and I this, think this I think be uh, better than that was like that was a good opener for thirty four. This will be a, a great match. Um, so yeah, this will be really fun. This guy. Uh, Hopefully this match, I think this should open night two. I was going to say, I think. yeah. I was going to say that. I think it's a perfect spot for it because you give this, because the opening match of the show is a big deal. Um, this will be a better opening to night two than Randy Orton and The Fiend and Alexa Bliss spraying gunk out of the tiara from two years ago, which you oh, were man. watching live, pal. Hey, you were watching live as black goo sprayed from a tiara, pal, but... Yeah, no, this, this should be a phenomenal match. Oh, 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 oh my poor pal. Looking forward to it. Oh, my God. That's too funny. Yeah, I think this should open the show. I agree. I mean, yeah, I don't know who's... I think Sheamus should win. Just give Sheamus his Intercontinental title run. Just do it. It's like, it's like Marcus Smart winning the Defensive Player of the Year, pal. Just give it to Sheamus already, bro. Yeah. I, I think Drew should win, but anyway. Yeah. That's just me. Uh, either way, regardless of the result, I think both of us will sleep just fine. You know, I don't think we'll be up tweeting late at night at 4 a.m. Like, oh, my God, Triple H is a horrible booker because Gunther won, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. Anything, anyone can win this and it's fine as long as they don't have, like, a finger poke of doom where Gunther just, like, gets pinned. That's probably the only... If they do that, that's something Vince McMahon would do. You have, like, the gobbledygooker come out and, like, <laughs> finger poke Gunther and he gets pinned. But no, I think what, yeah, what if, what if Sheamus comes out and bro kicks both of them and just pins them both? Stacks them Roman Reigns style. 20, oh 25 God. seconds into the match, pal. Yeah, pal. Just like Cody should stack and pin the entire bloodline and pin him. There you go. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to talk about the main event? We're here. I damn sure am, Kevin. So wh where are you at now from an intrigue standpoint? With, with I, I know you've, you've alluded to it, mm -hmm. but yeah. Wh where are you at at this very moment? I'm at a nine. You're at a at nine. nine. Wow. Yeah. You're at a nine. And why are you at a nine? nine. Sorry? Well, why are you at a nine? Uh, elaborate. Because this match is the next year and maybe more of WWE's week to week show rests on this match and who wins it. Because if Roman Reigns wins, we know what that's going to be. That's going to be Roman missing TV for three straight weeks. The show is going to have no champion. You're going to have some Bloodline stuff. You'll have J Jey Uso crying to Paul Heyman in backstage segments. Sakura will be standing there trying to pretend he's Roman Reigns because Reigns doesn't show up. And he'll be, he'll be okay. And Reigns will hit day 1,000. That's fantastic. But if Cody wins, the, the whole WWE opens up, Kevin. Reigns mm. becomes this un, unhinged, you know, incensed champion with no, no championships. He becomes way more interesting. Who knows? I'd say you retire the Universal title and either bring in a new belt or just keep the WWE title because no one can follow up what Reigns has done with that Universal title. Anyway, Cody opens up. There's that many opponents for him. The main event scene is actually different. It's fresh. I think that's the way to go. Hmm. That's just me. So, Kevin, for me, my hype level comes from the thought of what could be. This is the moment, Kevin. Interesting. Interesting. Well, pal, I, I went back to the archives here. All right, so I went back in the archives. I pulled up a clip of right. you shortly after the Elimination Chamber, you declaring that your excitement level was a 4 out of 10. Okay. Can you believe this, pal? Where, where are you going with this? No, like, I just want, I, I want the Elite Heat listeners to hear in, in Jimmy's voice, pal. I, I'm confronting you on camera in front of everyone about how, how your opinion has changed. It's so dastardly, pal. And, and you need to explain yourself, pal. So you, you said you said some things. I'm gonna play the clip. I'll let the Lee Heat listeners hear okay. this, pal. WrestleMania main event. How invested I am. Right now, I'm around the four. I need WWE to have a really good Roman Reigns and Cody face off. I need a heated promo off between the two. Maybe a brawl. Cody Rhodes invading SmackDown. 
Run, Ryan's mercilessly assaulting Cody. All right, let, let me pause it right there. Hold on, let me pause it right there. Okay. Cody Rose, he did invade SmackDown. And he was a, a mediator for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And, and is that what got you hyped to 9 out of 10, pal? But watching Missing Cody Rose point. cry? Missing the point. No, I was referring to the first face-off segment. You, you, you're moving the goalposts. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Kevin, you know, and the listeners know, I wasn't a fan of the segment where he mediated Sammy and Cody and Sammy and Owens hugging. But that whole point was about the face-offs they've had. But carry on. What, what, was it the face-off where Cody like pretty much put to bed the, his, the Dusty references? That was on Raw, wasn't it? Yes. All right. Yeah, what, what, what was their, their face-off on SmackDown? They're like, the highlight of the segment was Roman doing a Dusty impression. So, so Roman doing a Dusty impression is what got you to 9 out of 10, pal? Roman laying the titles out and saying, you've never even wrestled for that one. That one, <laughs> what's that? You don't know what that is. You know, the promo work. Really good stuff, pal. That was, that was the SmackDown one I really enjoyed. Not, the, not what you're trying to make out, pal. Come on, man. I don't know, pal. I don't know. This is a setup. This is an actual hit piece setup, pal. Uh, do, do you have anything else on me, pal? Is, no, is, no. Like, what is this? No, I got nothing else. That's all, pal. That, that's all I got for you. I, I just, I wanted the listeners to hear you say that you're, you, you know, your opinions change like the weather, pal. You know, it changed like the weather. And, and it, it, I'm curious to see, like, I don't know. I don't think that really what happened warranted nine out of ten. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not here to question your opinion. I'm just curious didn't on just, why. Did I'm just... you, didn't, you, didn't you hear out my reasoning that it's more about the next year of storylines as opposed to one match? It, Kevin, this match is massive for WWE. So it's huge. A year of storyline, like you said, with Roman being unhinged. So Roman's going to be unhinged from his couch while he's watching on TV and he's not on TV over the summer? And then what? what we're going to have Cody crying about how he met Sheamus at a bar in 2012 or whatever as cody wait, wait, so sorry, sorry. So, so first off what do you want cody doing just generally forget about roman roman doesn't that cody what do you what, what ideally kevin if you're you got the pen what would you want to see cody doing i i want to see him in an intriguing storyline i, I want to see some depth to cody aside from oh i went on the indies i found myself i'm not my father's son anymore okay that's essentially the yeah. storyline here now is mm-hmm. essentially where we're at. You know, I went on the indies. I started my own company. Um, I I didn't work out in my own company. The fan base booed me till I left, yep. and now I'm here to reclaim the the Rose family destiny. I want to see mm-hmm. something more than that. Something you want to see a feud with Randy Orton, do? Depending on how they do it. Mm-hmm. Depending on how they do it. I I think it, if done right, I think a Cody versus Randy Orton feud could be good. I want to see him face Dominic. You know, yep. I want I want to see Dominic as a chicken shit heel. Going in there against Cody, I just don't want to see him crying over mid Carters. That's that's the only thing I just don't want to see that, and I and I don't think anyone else does either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think because I, I made a list of this, Kevin. I was thinking to myself, okay, Cody wins. Who does he face? Because I I, I we had this discussion now. If Cody's a main eventer, like, is is he a main eventer? Video. And I was thinking to myself, who could he face where the storyline's compelling? So. Randy Orton, there's 15 years of story there. Dominic Mysterio, you just mentioned it there. Dom's a great heel. I look at potential, like a one more match sort of thing with Seth Rollins. I don't think that needs a six month story, just like a one more match. I think Cody Cena would be more than compelling. You can do Cody Brock. I think Cody Edge potentially would be fun as well. Cody versus Drew McIntyre. If McIntyre's a heel, that'd be fun. Cody versus Melo Hayes sometime in 2024. There's options. It's not just Cody going to be Kevin. The one thing I will give you, if Cody's coming out there going, Austin Theory, I was at a gym seven years ago and I, I found you doing bench press and inspired me to, to work hard. It, if it is that, which I, I doubt it, I think Cody, as we saw from that Raw promo, I think he's acknowledged there's some self-awareness, Kevin. And that's Cody's self-awareness made me believe, pal. This is Cody's time to win. Why, why does he need to win, though? Tell me. Why does Roman need to win? I mean, uh, why not? Say one thousand. No, not even that. Not even that. Forget the one thousand. Well, Ro- Roman is better than Cody. Let's call a spade a spade. Okay. Roman is here. Cody is way down here. Roman. Roman. Like Cody's here. Roman's sitting on his couch. 
Yeah. Roman is more must-see. Roman is more intriguing. Yep. Roman is in the midst of the most intriguing storyline that we of, of this decade and will, pro- will probably be at the end yep. of this decade, the most intriguing storyline. Yep. yep. I, I don't want to see Cody. I, just, I don't want to see it. Roman's more intriguing than the titles. Maybe. This is coming from a... And, and this is the thing. I've put damn near as much Roman Reigns spam and, and some would say dick riding into the universe <laughs> than many others bar iBeast and a couple of Stan accounts on Twitter. The amount of Roman content I've made, but that man, Roman, the next year could be so good if he loses the titles. Because, my God, the story you can tell with Jimmy Uso, Jey Uso, Sokoa, maybe The Rock, just the general downfall of Roman. That's so much more interesting if he loses the titles at WrestleMania. It just is so much more interesting. Oh, I, yeah. I lied. I do have more on you. I lied, like Eddie Guerrero. Oh. I, do, I, I have more on you, pal. Uh, th- this is the exposure of JTE. Okay. okay. Yeah. What have you got now? What have, I, you, what have you found? What have you dug through and found now, pal? Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot here, pal. Okay, I, I, I'm like Seth Rollins. Got? Got? I'm leaking DMs, pal. In the, the words the, of Dwayne Johnson, bring it! The, this is exclusive Elite Heat footage, pal. All right, pal. Right. Bear with this me. This better be good. I, so first off, you're playing old clips of me yeah. to try and... Yeah. Try and ruin my credibility, and now now you you've got DMs. So yep. Are you Seth Rollins? Look at this. Look at this DM. Kevin, I can't wait to record this Mania preview. Cody must beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And then Kevin replies, "Your wrestling opinions change like the weather, pal. Just a few weeks ago, you were two out of ten excited for Roman versus Cody. The Undertaker stuff is classically hate. I go lol. Yeah. Okay. I so I, I, I confronted you, pal." And, and you dodged mm-hmm. me, pal. You dodged me. Well, I'm coming at so you now, right back now, now. I think what you're doing right now is a joke. I, I'm calling you. You have an argument for why Roman Reigns needs to retain. So, oh, well, he's a bigger star. How about you make a new star? How about that? I'm calling oh. you out, pal. I, I, I think you're doing this for views, pal. I, I don't think you believe yourself, pal. I, I think you deep down want to see Roman Reigns win. Yeah, you're, you're, like I said, well, you're, so, you're, so can, you're, you're, you're your opinions change and like the weather, pal. A million times every SmackDown episode, like there's no need. Your opinions like, change like the weather, pal. You can't, you can't duck us now. I'm putting you on the spot, pal. What are we just? What is the late hate just saying here? Wow. Um. Look. I'll address these two out of ten allegations. Ken, first off, I said four out of ten. Second off, that was a month ago before they'd done any real interaction. Third off, you still haven't given me a reason why Roman Reigns should retain. He's a better, he's a bigger star. He's it would be the title would mean more on him than it would Cody. They could do no, more with Roman. Reigns sitting at home, not wrestling. That doesn't doesn't mean more. He is gonna he wrestle. Just doesn't. I don't want to see the, I don't want to see Cody wrestle every week. Uh, as the champion on Raw and SmackDown twice a week. The, the championship is supposed to be meaningful. Up. The championship is supposed to be meaningful. Roman makes it more meaningful. By only showing up when it matters. So when he does show up, it's a big deal. It's a must-see. It's a must-see, oh. pal. And, and you're a Roman Reigns fan. Like it, I it's, know. It's hard for me to it's believe right, this sentiment, I know, pal. It's frust- this is the thing, right? I've watched the WrestleMania build. This is Wrestle Effing Mania. This is the biggest show of the year. This is a match against Cody. And there's been how many Raws and SmackDowns from the Royal Rumble to now? I don't know. What? 12 ish combined? Reigns has appeared on three. You know, like it's it's not good enough. It, it's just, it's a tipping point for me, Kevin. Roman Reigns is the best guy we have now i acknowledge that he's cody isn't better than him but right now with cody's momentum he needs this match because he's never gonna get this momentum back kevin who's roman gonna lose to if cody doesn't beat him here uh, that, that's the thing i, I don't know I, i'm intrigued in, in the solo sokoa being built up and doing like a triple h batista type evolution storyline you know slow build that for a year 
get Solo Sokoa up to a super up to a superstar you don't status. Believe what you're saying. You don't believe what you're saying here. I don't. I you, would, you, would, you know you would. If, if WWE did that, your opinion would change like the weather again, pal. If they built Solo Sokoa up, if Solo Sokoa cut you one good promo, Solo Sokoa should be. I don't think you believe if, that. If, if Solo Sokoa cut one good promo on Raw, you'd be like, yeah, that's it, pal. Solo Sokoa needs to win. I'm hyped. You know, I'm ten out of ten for this match. Cutting that promo though. Yeah. A yeah, but then if he does it, it you're, you say that right now, but then he's, he, if he does it, which he could, your opinion's going to change, pal. He was showing self-awareness, and that was the big issue I had with him. And then he showed self-awareness, so therefore, I'm much more supportive of that. <laughs> Solo Sokoa? And Kevin, by then, Roman, let's say, okay, a year from now, this legendary Batista Triple H long-term storyline they're doing the big celebration after they've beaten Cody again at SummerSlam. Roman does the thumbs down. Sokoa gets turned on. Yay, Sokoa! We all cheer for him. He beats up a bunch of mid-carders on SmackDown. He, he beats Roman. Good on him. Like, but that's going to be a year, an extra year yes. on top of this. Re Reigns will yes. have the title for 1,300 days. Yes. Bro, look, R Roman Reigns... He plucked Jey Uso from literally hosting karaoke segments weeks yeah. prior and made Jey Uso into a star. What makes you yeah. think he can't do the same as Solo Sokoa? You're a big Roman Reigns fan. What you makes don't, you think he needs the title to you, do that? You, you don't believe he can make Solo to change? To do that? You, you, said, you said you want to see new stars be created. Cody Rhodes yes. not a new star. Co Newsflash, Cody Rhodes spent a decade in WWE. He's not a new star. Look at the merch sales. <laughs> He's clearly new. Look at the merch. Solo Sokoa is a, a, the definition of, of what a new star could be right you know and if it's okay. not solo sokoa bring carmelo hayes up let, let roman make a good storyline with carmelo hayes or braun breaker there's options what because braun breaker would have to cut promos week after week on raw and smackdown because reigns sits at home not showing up is that how it, i'm just like saying Kevin, there's other guys Kevin, out the there thing. jay uso jimmy uso solo sokoa Maybe, maybe The Rock. All of those storylines are that much better if Reigns loses the titles at WrestleMania to Cody. Because then you have Jey Uso being like, bro, you've literally ruined my life for like three years and have bullied and harassed me and made me, you know, you emotionally abused me. And just for you to lose, I gave everything for you, Uso, and this is what I get back. And then Ro Roman can just be like slapping him and going nuts and injuring superstars and you can repeat the same song. You have Sokol be like, I, I believe I'm better than you, Roman, and then they can have their match. Well, what what a solo gain, though, from beating a, a, like Roman Reigns that's not a champion. What does he gain from that? It, Roman Reigns, Reigns isn't the Reigns, Undertaker. Yeah, Reigns is the big star we both say he is. That's a massive deal. Yeah, but he's not the Undertaker. He doesn't have like a streak on the line. He's just Roman Reigns. What, what, what's this? I mean, I guess they could do a storyline, like you said, where it's family related, but... I mean, if you want to that's, build... That's more compelling. Solo that's would be a massive than... star if he wins both titles from Roman Reigns after a nice long-term build at next year's WrestleMania. You seriously think Reigns holding the title for over 1,300 days and the last two years of that being him sitting on the couch doing nothing week to week and him losing to Solo Sokoa is really the answer to anything instead of Cody right now? Pal, just wait until Solo Sokoa cuts a good promo in six months, pal. You'll be all on the Solo you, Sokoa You don't believe what train. you're saying. I'm, I'm genuinely... I don't... I'm Ro shocked. Ro Roman yeah. Reigns is capable of building Solo Sokoa into a, into a star. We've seen the track exactly. record. We've you seen the track the record. You don't need the titles for that. The titles will help make Solo a star. You said you want to see new stars being built. Kidding Roman will make Solo the star. Roman is the star. What do you want about, pal? Solo could be the face of the company, pal. Okay. <laughs> He could be Fair enough. He, he's a, he's a, a better candidate out of the bloodline. The people want to see Jey Uso beat Roman. Solo is a better candidate than Jey Uso. Solo looks the part. You know? Yeah. Solo acts the part. Jey Uso, everybody sees Jey Uso, they see a tag team guy. Just like when most people see Cody Rhodes, they're like, oh, that's Stardust, bro. Oh my god. I, 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 can't, I can't believe I'm on this side of the argument. It's so funny. Kevin, I'm just like... <laughs> This is the thing. I'm looking at WWE for the next six, nine months. And I'm thinking, okay, Roman without the titles and Cody with the titles, that is way more interesting than Cody without the titles, 
just floundering, having lost, being like, I'm going to get my momentum back. I'm going to beat you. Blah. And then Roman just not being there. That's that, that former one, the one I just mentioned there, Cody, no titles involved, just running around on Raw and Reigns just not showing up or having a feud with, I don't know, Lashley or whoever's left for him to feud with. He's beaten everyone. Yeah, Cody having now? a great non-title personal storyline with Ray, with the returning Randy Orton is good TV. That's good upper mid card TV. Kevin, uh, that needs the time way more than Reigns and Sokoa does. Come on, come on. Uh, that doesn't need the title. Wow. Why would they need the title? They have they have the history. You know, you could get they they, they, could, they could they could peel the curtain back. You know, Cody could talk about how like 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 it's a real life stuff. How like Randy Orton didn't believe in him or something. Like Randy Orton put him down. You know, Randy so Orton held so, him so back. So you so you derail, ruin Cody's momentum at WrestleMania just to oh well maybe we can try and build Sakar up and hopefully maybe in you know eight months fans aren't completely totally bored and sick of Roman and they can maybe like Sakar a little bit. My my I, I guess I'll say it this way. My point is, the title's going to wind up back at, on Roman at some point by the end of the year. I, I don't think Cody's going to be able to carry the ball. I, I think he's. I think people are going to get sick of him, like you and I have alluded to already on an okay. entire podcast episode. People are going to be sick of him, crying over mid card wrestlers or whatever he's going to be doing. Now that I mean, there's a possibility that that'll change if he shows that self awareness that he showed in that one segment mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks back on Raw. But for the most part, I think people are going to be sick of Cody. The intrigue is going to be low in WWE overall with him as a top star in comparison to where Roman Reigns is. Mm -hmm. And we, we'll probably see a knee-jerk reaction. You know, put the belt back on Roman, maybe at SummerSlam. They do a, you know, WWE loves doing rematches. So WrestleMania rematches at SummerSlam. Do a WrestleMania oh. rematch, Cody versus Roman. Roman wins. Yep. Here we are, pal. And then we're still going to get Roman going into WrestleMania 40 with the championship anyway. So why not just have him beat Cody? And just save us the six months of Cody crying over mid carters. I don't think. Oh, this is the thing. It's hard to predict. Cody's a weird one though, because you know he's had this. He's got such momentum, and I feel like if you don't strike now, what do you have faith that Double Beauty will get another guy to be this hot to beat Roman? Do you I do believe that? I do. You believe they'll make as hot as Cody is right now, merch sales, the crowd screaming during his entrance, top guy type feeling right now. You you think they'll make solace go, or not even solo, just someone else. Yeah, they could do you, it. They'll get to that point for WrestleMania. But they didn't really make I mean they didn't make Cody hot. Cody made himself hot and then just joined the WWE. <clears throat> Rejoin the WWE, you know. So you're telling me Cody didn't make himself hot on the indies in an AEW? Yeah, when he's when he's being booed out of the building, no one liked him, and then he left AEW. Yeah, he was really full of money. Kevin, we made a video. We'll check the archives on this if you want to as well. When Cody left, saying, <laughs> "Oh well, you know, Cody's going WWE, whatever." There wasn't the buzz there, and then he came in and it was like, "Whoa, this is actually like the presentation. He's like a big deal now. Whoa, this is really good." When he debuted at WrestleMania, returned, and everything since, it's been like, oh, damn, this guy's actually like legit. He's being presented really well. When yeah. Cody's being booed out of AEW arena, is having his weight belt thrown back at him by AEW's neckbeards. No, I didn't think he was making himself really hot, Kevin. I my, didn't. My, my point this, being... This, my... Is a double, this is a Nick Khan creation, pal. And the fact that you want him to lose and ruin his momentum at WrestleMania, oh, because Roman might get the belt back in a year anyway. That's not the point, Kevin. The point is, end this reign, this legendary title reign now, so what to someone who's hot while he's hot because it makes actual sense. It doesn't overstay the length of the reign. It's not like we're going thirteen hundred plus days and just extending the reign for the sake of it. So yeah. you think in ten years' time, when we're looking yep. back at this, when we're when we're doing our WrestleMania forty nine preview, and yep. and we're looking back at this main event, and and if mm -hmm. the result says that Cody Rose won mm -hmm. the undisputed Universal Championship from Roman Reigns. Yep. Yep. You're, you're gonna look back at it you're gonna say wow that was a great choice like that you, you think that's that's how this is gonna play out in the long run when it's all said and done not right now not in the moment you know it, it, yes it'll be a big moment cody winning fans will be cheering but 10 years yeah. from now you think it's gonna be remembered like wow yeah cody was the guy to end that reign 
Well, yes, because Kevin, once again, this isn't just a like the Daniel Bryan thing where it's like, oh, he needs to win, and then there's there's nothing after. With this, you have Cody win. The Roman side of this, this is the top guy who can have a year long downfall storyline, which is actually really compelling. And Cody, him winning, it, it elevates him more. It makes him the babyface star as it that, that's how he'll be presented because kevin roman reigns doesn't need another wrestlemania win. we're going to go into this in another relate heat yeah. in the next couple of weeks roman reigns doesn't need another wrestlemania standing tall with both titles ending the show we don't need that again just try something mate kevin i oh know we discussed this in the is cody a main eventer thing now what we've seen the past week or two it's given me strong signs of encouragement that there is something there that that SmackDown segment where he was like making Sammy and Cody, uh, Sammy and Owens hug was a little concerning. That was like the worrying part of Cody. Very but worrying. the part where he was addressing his self awareness, he was doing that promo on Raw with Roman. That was the best of Cody. That was the good of Cody. So I'm hoping Cody wins. We get a lot more of that good stuff. We get that going forward. WWE makes a new top babyface star. Hopefully, Reigns. He is just as compelling without the titles, if not more compelling, I'd say. So, yeah, to me, it just makes logical, obvious sense. Cody wins this match. I think that just is objectively the best way of going about it. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Cody's probably going to win. He's like a minus 500 favorite right now. So Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But so, I don't know if that it's... said, before you go, I just want to say, what I think realistically they will do, if I, for my prediction, I think the Usos lose the tag titles. So Owens and Zayn win the tag titles, and Reigns retains the universal title. And WWE gets to day 1,000 with Roman's championship reign. They have Reigns showing up every two, three weeks on SmackDown, scolding the Usos, saying, you failed my family. You let me down. You, I trusted you, Usos, and you you failed me. The, this whole family failed their tribal chief. I, they're they're going to do that for months. And then maybe Cody will win at SummerSlam when hardly anyone cares anymore. Like, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like how heavy of an odds, odds on favorite Cody is. That's that, that nerves me a little bit. Like it, it's just we're going into this with the assumption that just yeah, Roman's gonna lose. Like, well, it's, it, I think it sets up for like that possible, like too good to be true, too predictable moment where mm-hmm. the bookers are just like, yeah, let's, let's have Roman win. <laughs> let's spite everybody. Everybody wants to yeah. see Cody win. Just have Roman do it. Just for the sake of doing it, hmm. uh, which I don't know if that would be the best thing, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I also think that I do agree that like having Roman win and then Cody like build co- have Cody like struggle overcome obstacles. That's not a, awful. It's not that's a great be, story. That, that's Kevin, that's why he'll be crying, cutting dumb promos about I failed you. I let my father down at WrestleMania. This is gonna be my redemption arc at SummerSlam. Yeah. I'm gonna get my title. That's gonna be where we're gonna roast him. Yeah. That's gonna that's gonna cause so much room for us to just everyone to turn on him. That's not the way to go. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah. So that's WrestleMania, pal. Uh, WrestleMania thirty nine. Um. Uh, yeah. Any closing thoughts? Um. Yeah. I guess just closing thoughts. It. Uh, the bloodline, as has been the case with the last year of television, the bloodline, what they do with that, will determine a lot of this show. I think, as we've discussed, there's a bunch of matches, about a handful, which you're probably going to look back on most likely and go, I want to go back and watch that match, that match, that match, that match. A bunch of good stuff overall on the card. But really, the meat and potatoes of what's going to define this WrestleMania's legacy all time is just how, like, where they go with Roman Reigns and this bloodline stuff. Absolutely. That's going to be how we remember it. In five years' time, we're going to look back on it. If Cody wins and they go, go in the Cody Rhodes direction, whether that was a, a win or a loss, whether he had a good run, that's how we'll remember this WrestleMania. The same way we did with Daniel Bryan at 30, the same way we did with, I don't know, 35. Like, we remember 35 as a, a, a dud because of where they went after it. So it's a big show. The new era of WWE Power. Lots of young guys should go over. Lots of big matches. Kevin, it's been a good preview, pal. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace. Right, Cody must win. <laughs>